And as always, give, I'll give everyone time to join the stream. Yep, wonderful, we're live now. So hi everyone, if you are watching. us where you're joining from hopefully you have the sunshine like we do and hopefully i'm coming through nice and clearly because i think my internet is being a little bit slow so fingers crossed <laughs> Brilliant. And, and thanks again uh, ian for joining us and andrea as well really looking forward to the session today how are you both yes we're good enjoying yeah. the sunshine here in leeds as well yeah <laughs> So for, for many people, if you've watched the previous sessions, you'll both be familiar faces, but I'll just um, introduce the session just in case we have any newbies joining us today. Um, so Ian is... Breaking up. You break, you've frozen, Zoe. I'm not sure if she's frozen for everybody. Oh, you're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think I've come back now. Yeah. So, oh, brilliant. Sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so I was just introducing that you'll be running a session focusing on the hips and the feet, doing some nice gentle exercises. Um, and I'll surely be handing over to you so we won't have any slow internet once I've handed over, hopefully. <laughs> Uh, so if you are wanting to join in with the exercises live, we recommend you have um, something like a tennis ball handy to use in the exercises. Thank you, Ian. And, yeah, like that. yeah, if you've got all those squishy massage balls as well, they'll do the trick nicely. And as always, if you're unsure if the exercises are suitable for you, you can always sit back and relax and watch the session and then just check with your physio or your rheumatology team beforehand. Um, but hopefully it will all be a nice, gentle session. And it's all tailored for people with axial spar as well. So, um, yeah, so I don't know if you want to introduce yourself a little bit, Ian. I've introduced the session a bit there. Yeah, sure. So my name is Ian Young. I'm a somatic movement coach with AS myself. And uh, I've, over the years, uh, found lots of tools and ways to improve how I move. And I, and I love to share them. A lot of my clients have AS themselves. Uh, and this is uh, Andrea. Hi there. So um, I've been doing somatics with Ian for um, a number of years now, and um, Ian mentioned the word tools, and it is just fantastic to know that if you're having a flare up or you're not feeling great in the morning, there's some movements that you can do that are straightforward and um, they're just great at being able to um, release the muscles and ease some of the tension. So I would highly recommend it. It really does make a great difference. Oh, it's fantastic to hear. We had some lovely comments in the post advertising session beforehand as well. Lots of people sharing how beneficial they find your sessions. So I'm um, really looking forward to it. So we've got lots of people joining us online. So um, I'll hand over to you, Ian, if you're happy for yep. me to, and then I can come back and do pop any questions in the comments. Um, we can always uh, cover those at the end. Thanks very much, Zoe. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to um, be having as you can see, foot cam today. So we're, we're going to be focusing on feet and hips. We've done lots of other parts of the body, uh, but the feet are, are really important for um, how we move, how we function. Walking, standing, even sitting is affected by how we make contact with the, with the ground. And there's a lot you can do. Um, and that's why I'm, I'm a big fan of these, these soft um, balls. There's a lot you can do to, to change how you make contact with the ground. And if you've loosened your foot and, and mobilized your ankle, then everything higher up um, will function better and, and it changes how you how you walk, how you move. So that, that being said, with with somatics or somatic movement, it's it's very much about building awareness of how we habitually hold tension. And those of us with AS, we, we typically have pain in our joints and so we we tend to get tighter and tighter to, to to try and stop the pain but what what i've found is through through my journey is if you actually um work to to release the tension and the holding around the joint the joint moves better and feels better it doesn't it doesn't actually cause more pain it causes less and as we're noticing what's happening in our bodies we we build awareness and so the idea is you don't get into those habits in in the first place so it can be quite transformative and 
Uh, I think we've said before, you know, we we didn't used to look and move like we do now, do we? Do we? So it, it really can transform. I've had people coming to my classes with AS for for five years, and their body's changed in the same way that 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 my body has as well. So that being said. Um, it's always good to notice where you are as you start so that you can, the wonderful thing about somatics is you can actually feel it working. So let's just have a little, whatever space you have, just have a little walk up and down. So if you want to walk up and down, Andrea, and just see how you're, how you're walking. So it's interesting to notice whether as you, as your foot hits the ground, what's meant to happen is you hit on the outside edge of your heel and then you roll through and you do a big push off on, on your big ball of your, your big toe. And that's what the, the glute muscles in, in your bottom are, are really designed to do, that push off. And a lot of us tend to get a bit tentative with our walking and we don't really do that push off. So just noticing whether that happens for you. And then the other thing you can do is just put your hands uh, on top of the, the hip bones here like this, sort of flat. And then as you walk up and down, just notice whether you're getting any sort of lifting up and down in the sides of your body. Ah, it said recording stop. No, yeah, so just notice whether that's happening side to side. Is it going up and down on the sides? And then the other thing you can do is if you put your hands on the back of your sacrum, a little bit lower down and just see whether you're getting the two halves of the sacrum moving at all so turning like these two halves that's what happens when when you walk so just getting an idea of, the, of that as as we begin and then just stand and, and notice how you're making contact so where the weight is in the feet are you more on the front of your foot or the back of the foot Maybe you're sitting your weight across into one hip and you can move the weight side to side and just see, oh yeah, it's much more comfortable and easy for me to put my weight across into one hip than it is into the other. And maybe your weight is more on the outside edge of your feet. And typically that's what we call the green light where the, where the shoulders are pulled back and you have quite a, a lot of tension in your lower back. Or maybe you're more on the inside edges of the feet and you tend to have a slightly more slumped posture, tighter in the front with the shoulders rounded and the chin forward. That's what we call red light or startle reflex. So good to notice these things as we start. And then we're going to do a wonderful sequence with um, a, a soft ball or a tennis ball, any ball that you have really. So Andrea, if you'd like to start with one side, so pick one side and do this whole sequence on one foot. So you're just gonna start by just rolling your foot around as much as you can, getting as much of the foot underneath of the foot and putting, with this soft ball, you can put quite a lot of pressure into it. So you're waking up the bottom of the foot and you're releasing the, the muscles that can get also get tight under there, just like anywhere else. And then you're going to put your heel down on the floor with the ball of the foot over the ball and you're going to roll from one side to the other. So you're, you're really trying to mobilize the toes now so that the toes will, will function better and do that spreading and distribution of the weight as you as you walk. And then you can roll the ball towards you and you put the ball of the foot down on the floor and have the heel on and just wiggle. This is quite a small movement from the knee down. You're just wiggling the, the heel at the back there. And then just put the ball right in the in the arch and just put as much weight as you can down into the ball. You're almost like slightly lifting off the other the other foot. So that's the, the sequence. So then we come and stand 
and notice the difference between the two feet. So hopefully, if you if you're trying this at home, you'll 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 realise what 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 are you feeling there? And it just feels so flat, awake, alive. I've also noticed my shoulders dropped on that side. <laughs> Yeah, so it, typically you, you find there's a lot more contact, a lot more distribution, maybe the front of the, the ankle feels a little bit softer. And as Andrea says, it's, it's, it's the, you, you worked on the fascia which wraps around the whole of the body. So you, you might even feel like the, the hip has opened more in the front, maybe the shoulder's gone back. And, and there's even this thing where you, you actually, if you look straight forward, your peripheral vision has actually improved on that side because you know the muscles of the eye also have this same fascia wrapped around it so some people can notice it it's a, it's a fairly subtle thing but yeah just how you make contact and then what can be really fun is is to just try hopping on your other other foot see how it how that feels <laughs> it's a bit odd doesn't it yeah. and then hop on this one and feel how springy and bouncy and connected you yeah. are yeah Look how much happier you are on that side. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So let's let's even ourselves up. So yeah, having that having that sort of springiness, that that um, shock absorption, it's just going to help all of your body because you, you you're not going to be you know we've got tender um, joints. You know, if you're thudding into the into the ground and the shock is going straight up through those joints, it's, it's not going to be very comfortable. Whereas if you can create more of that shock absorption in the foot, in the ankle, then it's going to make it much easier and less painful to, to walk. So again, repeating the sequence, rubbing all the way around the bottom of the foot and then dropping the heel down onto the floor with the, the big toe and the, and the toes over, gripping the ball and rolling side to side. And then roll the ball towards you, put the ball of the foot on the on the floor and just give a little wiggle with the heel on the ball. As you can see on foot cam. Please, that's working. And then the last one is just putting the ball right in the arch and putting as much weight as you can into the ball. And then we can stand and notice again and yeah, hopefully now you'll, you'll really feel how grounded you are, how supported you are by the earth and that arch often drops so you, you feel like there's more of the foot in contact and now just notice where the weight is in the feet already, it might be more in the centre and it might be more balanced side to side. So I'm a real passionate advocate for, for doing this very regularly. I, I wouldn't think of starting my day without doing this every morning. Uh, I encourage all my clients. Yeah. And I, I'm the same. Yeah, once, once you've yeah. felt that, once you've experienced it on the bottom of your foot, you realise, gosh, it's, it's really changed how I'm, how I'm making contact with the, with the ground. So that's really great for the bottom of the foot. And then we're going to just do a few things for, for the ankles as well. So if you face forward again so people can see you can put the ball to one side. So we're going to just do some, some ankle mobilization. So the first thing is literally just, if you may need to hold on to, to do this, just to come up onto your toes as much as you can. And then the important bit is to do it really slowly and controlled on the way down. So you'll feel how you've got a contraction up the back of the leg and then how slowly with control, can you can you land the heel? That's great, Andrea. Fantastic. And then we'll do it the other way. So now you come up onto your heels and lift the front of your toes. And again, you may need to hold on to keep your balance. And then slowly down and immediately rocking up 
on to your toes again. So you're just rocking between those two and this just encourages the release down the front and back of the legs and just make sure you're getting as much movement as you can in the ankles and you may feel and experience clicking and clunking. We don't tend to spend as much attention on our ankles as we as we perhaps should do. And then just stand onto one foot and, and just do some circles with your other foot. So pointing, flexing, circling, creating as much mobility as you can in your ankle joint and circle the other way and you'll hear, probably feel and hear lots of clunks and clicks as you're doing this really really great to to get this mobilized and that again will will really help with our shock absorption so again let's let's try hopping on the first foot that you haven't done the ankle yet and then hop on this one and you'll feel you should feel again that that real ease of, of, of bouncing yeah so let's just do some circling and pointing and flexing on the other foot now so you're just trying to find any little clunky clicky crunchy tight spots And then just have a little hop on that side and see if it feels like we've got springiness into the foot. Yep. Great. So we're going to switch now to lying down on your back on the mat. So just a moment while we adjust here. So again, always good when you lie down, first of all, to check in and notice how you're making contact. So we're focusing on feet and hips today. So particularly noticing what's happening around your pelvic area. So how is the weight distributed? Does it feel like you're sinking more into one hip than the other? And then just notice, is it even down your, your two legs? So is there as much weight in the calf on both the left and the right and the heel on the left and the right? And then just notice whether your feet what you can do is without looking to start with, just get a sense of how you think your feet are lying, using your awareness from inside and from the contact on the surface down the back or the side of the heel, getting a real sense of how, how you think your feet are. This is what's called proprioception, your awareness of where your, your body is in space. And it's another thing that gets enhanced through somatics. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can pop your head up and have a little look and see whether your proprioceptive sense is, is working efficiently. <coughs> so then we're going to start with some somatic movement on the mat. So you can slide the heels towards you and bend the knees up and plant the feet a comfortable distance from your bottom. And then we're going to start to breathe deeply into our belly, rolling the pelvis forward, 
And then as you sigh out, sinking in the middle, rolling the pelvis back. Great. And as you breathe in through the nose, you'll be arching the lower back and rolling the pelvis forward. And as you sigh out through your mouth, you'll let the air go out the belly, you'll sink in the middle and the pelvis will roll back towards you. So that's what we call arch and flatten. And what you may notice as you're doing this is that it feels like one or other hip is, is kind of gripping on and doesn't, doesn't really want to, to let go. And you can, you can do a little test here. So next time you breathe in, you can just try and roll towards one hip and you'll probably pick the one that's slightly easier to roll towards. If you're not sure, breathe out again, flatten in the back. And the next time you breathe in, try and roll towards the other one. And you might find it a very different experience. It might be quite hard to get the weight anywhere near over there. So if that's the case, we're just going to roll towards the easier hip a few times, the one that feels familiar and comfortable. So as you're breathing in, the belly swells and you just rather than just bringing the tailbone down between your legs, you're sinking towards one hip, the one that feels easy and comfortable and doing that a few times. And when it feels really easeful on that side, we're going to switch to the other side and just being patient and kind and you're not trying to force it. You're not trying to get anywhere. You're just trying to see how would it be for me to roll towards this other hip. And you might just notice that it, that it starts to ease and it starts to feel, oh yeah, actually when I, when I do this regularly, it's something starts to, to let go and that grippy feeling from the hip. And it's a bit easier to get my weight across this side now. So we always start with the, the easy hip. We want to do what the body wants to do to start with. And then the other side can kind of learn from, from the ease on the other side. So how's that feeling? Is that even on both sides? So, I'd say so now. The right side was easier, but the left side's evening up now. Okay, so now you can go straight down the middle again, and you might just notice that you have a lot, a lot more movement in the in the pelvis now. It might just feel like that tailbone is a lot freer. It's not being gripped by either side. It's just floating up and down, and let that movement ripple up and down the body. Let the head move. And the head moves in the same way that the pelvis does. And then just relax in the center. And then just relax in the center. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of work on, on those glutes that I mentioned, the ones that power your, your walking. So all you're going to do is, you're, if you've not done this before, it might seem a little bit funky, but give it a go. You're going to squeeze tightly one half of your bottom. So if you, as I say, if you've not done it before, you might have to kind of mentally work out how do I squeeze just one half of my bottom. And you're going to feel it kind of tightening and slowly kind of you get a little bit of a lift off the off the floor and then softly releasing and there's quite a few muscles there so just little bit by little bit we we do things very slowly with with somatics it's that slow lengthening of the muscles as you let go that is really really powerful yeah, and someone was asking what the difference is between this and Pilates, and there, there is some similarities in that it's that long, slow elongation of the muscles that we, we do in Pilates. I've done some Pilates training as well, and I do Pilates regularly. I really rate it as, as a tool. So you're just continuing, just do a few on that side and just noticing how things change. 
the, the big difference with somatics compared to Pilates is that we, with a tight muscle, we, we do a contraction and then we do a slow yawning, letting go. And then we have a moment of awareness where we notice how things have changed. So that's what we call a panticulation. It's the things that cats and dogs do when they get up off the, the mat and reset their, their muscles and arch their spines. And then switch to the other side and squeeze the other side of your bottom. And the neuroscience supports the, the method. So they've, they've actually done MRI studies and they've looked at muscles under the um, MRI and you can actually see that muscles lengthen more when you've contracted them first. So that's a technique that we then take all around the body. So just noticing that letting go. So the glutes can be a little bit weak if we spend a lot of time sitting, but you can also end up with quite a lot of tightness in that area. And that's one of the, the reasons people get sciatica with the piriformis muscle in the middle of the, the bottom gets tight and squeezes on that sciatic nerve. So you might just notice the, the bottom feels more relaxed and spread and your, your pelvis, the back of the pelvis has landed a little bit more on the mat. So then we're going to put your right hand behind your head and we're going to do a little bit more of that, that breathing pattern where as you breathe in, you're arching your back away from the mat and rolling your pelvis forward. As you breathe out, you're flattening. And then this time you're lifting your head and your elbow and your opposite knee. And you're turning across your body as you lift that opposite knee. And then you drop the heel of that leg as soon as you can, as you open out the top half. And you get some friction on that heel and slide it long. And what this does is it, it engages the, it's the, the muscle called the psoas, which is deep in the leg. And it's the only muscle that connects the legs to the spine. And it's quite a tricky one to get a release for. This is one of the few that I know of that, that's effective to help to let that muscle go. So you're turning, it's as much a turn with the upper body as it is a lift. And each time you're sliding that leg long, you just have that little mini pause each time just to fully let go before you do the next sequence again. So it's quite a, a tricky muscle to feel. It's very deep in the, in the thigh. It's, very hard to manually do anything to it. This, this just seems to really encourage it to, to let go. So just finishing up that one and then we're going to swap the hands around. Bring the knees back up and start your breathing pattern again. So we start on the in breath with the arching of the back and you can even press the shoulder down into the mat as well, just to get that diagonal arch. And then as you sigh out, flattening the back, turning across the body, bringing the knee up. And we're working as well as on the psoas here, we're also working on the diagonals. So the way we function with the way we walk is very much in these diagonal and spiral patterns. And there's like a, an X of, of muscles across the front and back of the body on these diagonals from shoulder to opposite hip. So we're also squeezing on that diagonal. And then as we open out and as we drop the foot, we're lengthening the muscle and relaxing it. And when you've got long, strong, flexible muscles, 
that's when you function most optimally in your movement. So just pausing there and noticing. Just Andrea finish this one. So just pause and notice how do you feel? How's the contact across the back of your body now? around the back of the pelvis. Anything to report? Yeah, it definitely, my pelvis definitely feels flatter and wider on the on the mat. It also feels as though my, um, my shoulders are, are flatter on the mat as well. Yeah, so often when we work these diagonals, we, we find that we, we, a lot of us have this tendency to have our shoulders rounded forward a bit or up by our ears and any of this work that encourages this diagonal work tends to balance out between the two sides and help the, the shoulders to come back as well. I certainly feel more comfortable on the mat. It feels, feels more comfortable on the mat. Comfortable, Great. Yeah. So let's um, come on to the side because we're going to do something for the side of the body now. Someone just saying they struggle to get up from the floor due to knee problems. Would they be just as effectively done on a bed? It's, o it's okay to do them on the bed. It's harder to get the feedback um, that Andrea has just been finding from, from being on, on the mat. So um, as long as the bed's not too soft, you will still get some benefit, but uh, it, you, you want a surface that's not too soft really. So we're going to have the uh, it's, we're going to do the straight legged variation. So with the lower leg bent and the top leg straight in line with the body. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put the top hand on the outside edge of your thigh. And on your um, out breath, you're going to lift the leg up and press the leg up into the hand. So you get a, a contraction on the outside of the thigh there. And as you can see, Andrea has got a, a straight back and she's just, you can either lie well, with your head on a cushion or lie on your arm as Andrea is doing. And then you're going to slowly lower that down. And relax and always completely switch off in between because if you are preparing for the next one before you've completely let go, then you won't do a full letting go. And we want to totally let go. That's where the power of the release comes so that it releases and lengthens the, the muscles. Yeah, and then again, lifting up, squeezing into the hand. Yeah, and I can see Alexia's comment about the, the Pilates teachers. Yeah, I mean, a lot of Pilates teachers do um, study somatics as well. It's it's quite well known in, in the um, Pilates world. And actually, the, the one we did at the beginning was a Franklin method with the ball. So, you know, we, we, we tend to study quite a few different disciplines. But for me, uh, I think somatics and Pilates work really well together. Somatics is really good at the releasing. This is what we're doing here. And then Pilates is great at the aligning and strengthening, but only once you're in the right alignment. And if you do the somatics first, you do the real releasing so that you can then get in your right alignment. That's how I think they work best together. So let the leg land now. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sweep the arm up by the side of the head as you breathe in. Breathing into that top side feeling the length in your side and then you're going to as you breathe out lift the head to the side sweep the arm down and lift the leg up to meet the hand so everything becomes tight in the side of the body and then you breathe in to slowly lower really breathe into those top side and you can see andrea's side it's like it becomes like an accordion it's a squeeze box and then here it really lengthens and you reach and you breathe into that top side and then breathe out. 
squeeze down again. Great. So we'll just do one more. And then just roll onto your back and see how you feel. Yeah, that's a great tip from James. Hi, good to see you here. Um, a massage table. You might notice that the, the mat that Andrea is, is, is working on here is one of mine, which is a, a really thick one as well. It's like a four millimeter one. Most most of the mats are very, very thin and it's, it, it's not very comfortable. So I, I, I have these thicker mats that I use. So when you've just done one side like this, it's a great opportunity for the, for the brain to notice the difference, the impact of what you've just done down one side of your body. So you might feel really wonky when you've just done the one side. Uh, you might feel really uneven. It might feel like all the weight has shifted across. Uh, and it can be kind of hard to, you might, you might feel that it feels uh, released and lengthened down one side. Um, but it's quite hard to place this with the side because there's not many nerve endings to, to give you feedback. The sides tend to be a bit of a blank. How's that feeling? Are you feeling quite uneven? Yeah, feeling lopsided. Lopsided, yeah. yeah. Uneven. I feel like I'm rolling to one side. Rolling to one side. So what I'm going to do is, because I'm aware of, of time, we're actually not going to do the other side, so that, that's going to just leave you um, to, to notice for, for a bit longer. And it, it just gives you that opportunity to really see, oh, yeah, that's, that's what's happened in my body. And you, you've got a, a chance to do, to do this at the, the end to, to even yourself up. But aware of time, we're going to just bend one knee up and, and plant one foot on the mat and keep the other leg straight. And then all you're going to do is on, on your out breath, you're going to slide that straight leg and that heel away from you. And you can sort of press into the other foot. No, sorry, the, the straight leg. So I'm pushing that one. That's one, that's it. And you can use the other foot to press into so that the, you'll notice that the, the hip on the bent knee side comes up towards your armpit as the hip on the other side slides away. So this is, this is called a hip hike. You're hiking, the hip is coming up on the side with the bent knee and then coming back level. So that this is another really good way of getting the pelvis moving. And when we're talking about the hips and the feet, and in fact, the whole body, the more you can do to get the pelvis mobilized and moving, the better it is because so many parts of the body connect into the, the center, into the pelvis. So if we can get mobility here, it just makes everything function so much better. Great. So just swap the knees around, just do a few on the, the other side, just to keep ourselves a little bit even here. Yeah, we seem to have consensus on the chat that we need thick mats if we've got AS. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're just going to repattern our walking. So um, this is a little bit subtle one to, to, to experience. So I'm just going to give um, Andrea some hands on feedback. So you're going to bend that knee up as well. So all, all you're going to do when, when you're lying on the floor is you're going to, um, so Andrea is going to press one knee into my hand and then press the, the other one in. So obviously you don't have me here with my hands, but you've got that sense. So it's, it's one of the things that we, we need to be able to do when walking, particularly to cope with uneven ground. So we spend a lot of our time these days on, um, flat surfaces and we, we can we can end up losing this 
mobility if we if we if we don't regularly make sure that we're we're exercising it. So yeah, that's great. You've you've certainly got plenty of movement there. So that's walking one, and then we're going to bring the feet much wider, so probably as, as wide or just slightly wider than the, the mat. And then Andrea's just going to drop one knee forward and down towards the mat, keeping the other knee fairly upright and calm, and then swap and drop the other knee down. So you're rolling across the back of the pelvis, you're really feeling the length in the side of the body, really letting it go and just feel that that releasing that we were just doing on the side really helps to to get this movement going great and you'll notice that the movement in the legs comes from the length in the side so all of the body's connected and we tend to think, oh, the legs must be doing what I've, something in the lower half of my body. But actually, most of this movement comes from the releasing around the side of the, of the body. So nice. now let's bring the, the feet quite close together. And we're going to just let both knees drop one way. And then drop the other way. And again, now you've got you've got the weight of two knees really lengthening the side each time as you as you roll over. And then we're moving towards our, our final integration movement. Time's gone quite quickly. So you're going to start to turn the, the head the opposite way to the knees. So you're getting a twist in the spine. And then you'll see what Andrea is doing with the arms is she's going to start to roll the arm back that she's looking at and the arm forward that she isn't looking at. So you're twisting the arms in the socket in opposite directions. And so the shoulder that you're not looking at comes forward and the shoulder that you're looking towards gets pressed back. So this is this is a what we call the wash rag. It's a lovely, lazy integration movement that brings everything together. So this is a, a short sample of, of some of the things that we can do to help the, the feet and knees. My classes I teach online uh, are typically more like an hour and a quarter. Gives you a little bit more time to sink in, a little bit more time to notice. So then just let that go, let the arms and legs come by your side. And then just notice anything that's changed about how you make contact, how the weight's distributed. Particularly around the pelvis, the weight in each hip, the calves, the heels. What do you notice? I feel like the weight in my pubs and my hips is evenly distributed. So I'm feeling sort of flatter and even and more relaxed on the mat. Mm. My feet are turned out because of the positioning of the hips. The feet feel more relaxed and the legs. Yeah, so you've, we've opened up the hips, we've relaxed yeah, them and the, and the, yeah. and the feet have, have dropped out yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So it feels very comfortable. <laughs> Great. So let's very gently come on to your side and come up to standing and why not just go straight into a little walking up and down scan so you can see has anything changed in your walk so again you can notice whether there's more heel strike now you can notice whether You've got the, the hips now wiggling a bit more, so that there's this pulley system in the sides going up and down. And you can also put the hands on, on the back of the sacrum and notice whether there's a little bit more of that movement, that wiggle in the back of your pelvis. There definitely is. I feel like there's loads more movement there now. So it feels like 
we haven't had to do a huge amount in order to really change the way you make contact with the ground, how you walk, how you function. And if that is all working so much better, then everything else is, is going to feel better. And you're going to start to also get this kind of counter lateral rotation where the opposite shoulder comes towards the other hip. So hopefully you found that really good for the feet and hips and just finally standing and noticing. So just noticing how you how you're standing, where the weight is in the feet. Hopefully it's hovering a little bit more in the center of the foot rather than on one side or forward or back. Um, you also might notice you feel maybe a little bit better aligned head a little bit more on top of the, the spine. And we will leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed that today. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm just going to attempt to pin my video as well. Um, <laughs> I think I've swapped us. Here oh, we well. go. <laughs> um, apologies to Ian because there were some technical issues on my end, but the actual stream worked perfectly. So from everyone else, <laughs> they got a nice uninterrupted session. Um, but that the was recording has stopped. That was fantastic. Thank you. Um, and definitely, we've got lots of people joining in. I can see lots of people watching. It was lovely to have those comments as we went through as well. Thank you for answering those questions too, multitasking there. Great stuff. Yeah. Did we? Did I answer everything? I I, I was watching it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, you've answered everything. But yeah, if anybody has any more burning questions, do pop them in the comments because we've got a few minutes. We can always answer any extra ones. Yeah, um, yeah. It'd be good to hear how people got on because it's 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 the strange thing about doing a Facebook Live. I don't I don't have the people, but that's why I have Andrea here so that I can see you know, how, how she's moving and, and get the feedback from her about what, what the impact is. So, yeah, it's quite strange broadcasting into into dead space, as it were, not knowing how people are getting on. So, yeah, I'd love to hear. If Absolutely, wants. yeah, you can't even get that visual feedback. But um, mm. and it's really nice as well with Andrea sharing how she's feeling as well. You can kind of get an idea of whether you're doing it correctly or not and, yeah, and sort of see how you're meant to be feeling too. So, yeah, do let us know in the comments how you're feeling. And we had James joining us and he joins us sessions regularly. So that's great to have him there and sharing his experiences too. Yeah, James is, is, is a regular at my classes. So yeah, I have I have I teach online um mainly these days really since the since the pandemic. And uh, I'd say about ninety-five percent of the people that come to my classes have have AS and uh, are finding loads of benefit from from doing these movements. So it's that thing about, you know, you think it's the AS and there's nothing much you can do, but if you can work on the muscles and release the muscles around those painful joints, then you tend to get so much more movement and yeah, feel so much better as a result. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've popped a link to your website in the uh, comments oh, as well. Great. So Thank if you. anyone wanting a bit more info or looking yeah, at classes, get in touch. then yeah. do have a look. Yeah. That's wonderful. There's no more comments coming in at the moment. Was there anything you wanted to add either of you? I mean, it's been information packed as well as great practical. No, I think I think uh, I think that's that's. Uh, oh, Erica's saying she feels great. Oh, excellent. Yeah, and she's she's another one that comes to my classes, so it's good to see her here. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, uh, I think we've we've basically if you if you go back, I think all all the videos we've done now are on on um, my website and ianyoungsomatics dot com, and also on on the NAS website. So. If, if you do all of them, that the, we kind of worked our way from from top to bottom, didn't we? <laughs> and included the spine as well, most importantly for, for AS. So, yeah. Yeah, it's been fantastic. And um, yeah, we've got all of those on our, our YouTube page as well. Um, it's been really good to be able to just work through the body like that. Thank you. Brilliant. Um, wonderful. So I'll just let everyone know about the next session. We haven't got a Facebook Live next week, but the week after on the 8th of June, I'll be joined by physiotherapist Matt Daly. And we're going to be talking about the impact that Axial Spa can have on men. Um, if you didn't see our previous session on women and Axial Spa, that was with Dr. Helena Marzo Ortega. Um, and again, that's on our, our website on the page, My AS My Life, which is where you can also find Ian's videos as well. So do have a look at that before they're live in a couple of weeks. Um, and I'll also pop a link to our feedback survey in the comments as well. It'd be lovely to get everyone's feedback on these Facebook Live sessions um, and just let us know what sessions you'd like to see as well. We want to tailor the programme around what everyone with Axial Spa would like. 
So um, thank you so much again, Ian and Andrea. That was brilliant. Always lovely to see you both. And um, Great. yeah, thank you, Andy. people joining. Thank you. Brilliant. Well, I'll finish the live stream there, but um, I hope you see everyone in a couple of weeks.